Welcome, welcome, welcome. If everyone comes beaming in for our virtual online book release party in honor of Christopher Johnson and uh, great to see smiling faces. <laughs> Come on in, grab a cup of coffee, relax in your chair. You're in for a great hour, a lot of fun information, and you get to participate in this as well as we go further into this. My name is Rich Bontrager. I'll be your host for the afternoon. If some of you know me, yes, Trigger, that is the actual brand name uh, as I have been in media all my life, talk show host, entertainment host, media coach. And uh, that's why I have the honor of doing these special book launch parties. Uh, it's It's been a great time getting to know Krister and now his wife. It's great to meet Ellen today. Uh, and his publisher is with us. And I actually got to know her uh, over the course of last year as well. So it's been a lot of fun to help prepare for this incredible book launch party. And we're, we're going to have some prizes, some giveaways, some interviews, some surprises along the way. And it's all about be daring, be different. Reverse engineering of your life from who you are to who you want to be. Feel free later on. We open it up for question and answer time. You'll be able to ask questions of Christer, his book. Uh, and if you know him well enough, he can probably handle any surprise question, I think. He's he's pretty good at thinking on his feet. Uh, also, as we do go through this today, mute yourself as much as you can. We want to have a good, clean recording because Christopher will be able to have this used for social media and future purposes as well. So let's all have a great time and uh, do this together well. I am going to start off with a uh, individual that knows Christopher pretty well. Tom Green is his name, and Tom has been involved with Christopher. Uh, Christopher's been his mentor. And interesting enough about Tom Green, he learned about stretching, about growing, pursuing your dreams. And he is in the process of moving from Norway to Portugal. He actually listened to the mentor, took his advice, and said, I'm actually going to go do it. So here's what Tom Green has to say about Christopher Johnson. Uh, my name is Tom Green. I have been um, a clinical psychologist for over 30 years. And I have uh, had the pleasure uh, of being uh, in mentorship with uh, Christy Johnson now for uh, about one year. Um, I will say that um, to summarize my experience that uh, uh, Christy has helped me from uh, wanting to change to make the choice to really do it. And um, I am amazed at how deeply he knows the pitfalls of becoming the higher version of yourself. He has walked uh, the way himself. Um, he mastered the art of telling you truths about yourself in a caring way. He kicks your ass firmly and softly at the same time. That's my summary of Christer. I love how he ended that because if you know Christer, you're it's real, it's raw, it's authentic, and words fly, but he does it all in love, intentionality to help you get where you want to go. So uh, th that that was absolutely marvelous. So yeah. Christer Johnson, let me do the official proper introduction here as we get into this today. Christer is tailor-made mentoring. He is based on a deep understanding of his clients, how to get to set goals that you really want to reach and how organizations and persons can reach their goals they do not know how to reach by themselves. Christopher offers a unique combination of extensive corporate experience, extensive mentoring and coaching knowledge that can take you to the next level and even beyond. Christopher was in the international corporate world for more than 25 years, 29 years old, and was a CEO of a domestic company. 34 years old, he was a CEO of an international group operating more than 30 countries around the world. And under Christopher's leadership, the company has reached big goals, credited great value, and recently has been at, uh, well, several board managing private investments. Finally, Christopher has a genuine interest in helping others being successful. More than five years ago, he started a new path for Christopher working full-time as a mentor and a coach. He's helping people and organizations set goals, become a higher performer, reach higher goals, and his programs are unique in the market space right now and has over time proven to be very successful for his clients and those throughout many different countries. Give a virtual welcome to Christopher Johnson as we add him to center screen here. 
Christopher, great to have you at your own party. Wonderful to be here too. This is amazing. <laughs> and it, it's, it's amazing to be in one of my goals. As I always tell my clients, the feeling of being in your goal is amazing. And it's a lot of gratitude and appreciation behind uh, and also feeling that, of course, because this is one of my goals. So this is how it is to reach one of my goals. And that's, that feels good. Congratulations. We're all happy to be here. And again, reading the book has been exciting. Uh, and our conversations have been very rich. It's been fun to be part of your ocean going journey because we've done several interviews. If you haven't caught them, we've been interviewing him from his boat at sea as he travels. Mm. And first of all, are you having a fun time doing that? Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. It's always a challenge because we never know the, sea, the state of the sea. And, and actually, some some of the times this has been almost too rough, but um, that's just the way we live. I mean, we we, um, we we see how far we can go, and it's it's important just to push ourselves through out and out of the comfort zone and see that when we when we left uh, when we I mean we were out sailing the last well the last two months we've been out sailing and we we didn't know how to manage this combining you know writing a book launching a book um doing mentoring having client calls having prospect calls having strategy calls all at the same time but it and and I, I think that's an example of how you do it you just have to jump and say it'll work out and then you just do it and i was selling mentorship from from the from the fore cabin of the boat while alien was was behind steering the boat <laughs> and it worked just great it just works out it's just something you believe you know, there will be a, a new book in all that, I'm sure. Somewhere you're going to yeah. write a book on your ocean adventures. <laughs> Let's start with your background. You, mm -hmm. as I read, scaled quickly in leadership, business. What what drove you to achieve what you had achieved at such an early age? Oh, the need for appreciation. You know, the need for being seen, actually. It was more external than, than internal. <clears throat> it was more... It's it's a little bit about all these expectations from from everyone around you and from the environment. I, I you know, I, I I graduated from from a management school. I remember I said the last year that the last year I said that before I'm forty I want to be CEO of an international group, and then I forgot about it for many many years. And I realized just a few years ago that I said that. Um, but I guess it was more that you know show to everyone that I was good. That I was good enough and showed to myself. And of course, you have all the financial aspects and all the material things. You know, it's nice to have, have a nice company car, you have a nice boat, you have all these things. And um, as Tom knows, and Tom knows me, I, I mean, Tom has helped me as a psychiatrist before as well, many, many years ago. There is this feeling of emptiness that kicks in around 40 years old, 40, 42, 43. And that, that kicked my butt as well. Speaking about kicking butt did you like the way he ended his little piece on you that, that he did did he nail you pretty well on how you challenge and coach people yeah i think so and and it's it's important because as a mentor you always see the client in the goal you never doubt when people say i i have this dream i ask well is it a dream or is it a wish or is it a goal it's a goal okay i see you in your goal if you ever doubt yourself Trust me, use my belief in you because I see you in the goal. You know, I visualize, I use my imagination. I can see your freedom. I can see your success. I can see you at stage. I can see you launching your book. I can see you writing your book in Portugal. I can see you do that. I see that. And, and, and from that point, seeing that, then it is with love that I correct them. It's and never with anything than love. It's, you know, if you say you want something, then I can help you. But then you need to be coachable and you need to trust yourself and trust me. So that whole phrase I see in you, and I've heard other mentors talk about that phrase is more powerful than people realize it until they really begin to understand the power of someone else speaking into their life. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That's, that concept of I see in you is extremely powerful? It is. It's so powerful. And it's a very, very strong signal to the universe that they are in the go. It, it's done, you know, in the minute you ask for it, it's done. Ask and you shall receive. I, <clears throat> I often say to, to my clients, it's like ordering a pizza, you know. You know we will get it, but you don't know when. <laughs> I said that Elin and I have a friend in Malaysia, a very, 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 very dear friend of ours in, in Malaysia. And they struggled after COVID. They were, you know, it, it was a tough time during COVID. And they are in the, in, in, in the, um, 
in the travel industry and they had a tough time. And I, I, had, I helped him a little bit. So I, I, I coached him a little bit. And I said, it, it's like you're going and order a coffee and some roti. Roti is like a cake they have in Malaysia. And then he caught it. He said, it's like that. I said, yeah. You order it. You don't know when. You know we will get it. You don't have to go to the kitchen to ask for it. You know we'll get it. You don't know when, but you will get it. Then, one week ago, he texts, and we haven't heard from him for a long, long time, and his goal was to buy a motorcycle, a really cool motorcycle. He texts and said, I got the money. I have no idea what happened. He said, it's just amazing. Thank you so much. From, from, from the deepest of my heart, he wrote to us, it works. I said, yeah, it does. It works. Yeah. Wherever so, we are, whatever we want. Mm. So I want to get into the book here, Be Daring, Be Different. You, you also have this life motto about how far can I go? You weave it into everything you do, but it starts off with your own personal journey because you did scale, you did grow, and then you walked away from it all to become a mentor. What, mm. what was that like to break free? Because a lot of that pours into the book. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, <clears throat> I did what I tell other people to do. You know, there are four things highly successful people do. And now I can say, you know, those of us who live the life we really want, and that is successful life is to live your full life, how you want, not how I want, not how others want, how you want. And, you know, the four things we do is that we make fast decisions. This I will do. The second thing is to set high goals. The third thing is to listen only to people that has that have done what you want to do. And the fourth thing is to invest in yourself. Always have a mentor, always study. And I got a mentor. And, and I said to him, I want you to kick me out of my paradigm. So I want you to kick me out of my comfort zone. And I said, I want to be your best student ever. And he laughed and I said, I'm not joking. <laughs> and, and it's so important. You need someone to push you. You need someone to hold up a mirror in front of you and angle it a little bit differently to see you from your goal, not to see you from your present. And you need to push someone. And, and 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 he did that. Arash Wusugi, he did that. And 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 he said, you know, I, I don't think you have a goal. I think you have a wish. And you know, you have a dream, a wish, or a goal, and it, you you don't act until you have a goal. And I said, you know, so you're telling me that I'm using my paradigms as an excuse? Yeah, you do. I said shit. I have to move. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you also went to the point of. That 40 year age, and was it a stressful time at age 40? Was it a adult crisis time that you made the change to really advance? Was that part of the equation, do you think? Or were you just ready to break free? <laughs> Andreas, my son is there. He knows all about this. It was a divorce. It was a stressful time. It was a sad time. It was a tough time. Um, and that I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that that was the start of it, but it, it changed inside me. Tom and I had that discussion before. He's like, what happens inside your body around the year of 40, 40, 42, 43? There is a reason why it's called the 40 year crisis. I think there are two things happening. One is external and one is internal. The external thing is you're kind of done with the project, getting a family, living the life you're expected. Okay. So you're educated. You made it through that. You found someone you love or you think you love or something. You find someone you love and you have some kids and you have a dog and you have a villa and you have a Volvo. We call it <laughs> Villa Volvo syndrome here in Scandinavia. It's like, okay, so you do all that. You do all that is expected of you. And then the kids grow up and then you get this emptiness. Oh, I'm done. What's next? And that kicks in about at the same time as there is a physical change of the hormones in your body. Isn't that interesting? No, it is. Because again, people joke about it. Mm. But I don't think I've ever heard people really dig into the way you just did and explain it's a real thing. Mm. It's a part yes. of life and growth. So let me go to one of the chapters of your book. Chapter three picks up on this very theme we're talking about. Who am I? That's part of the question mm. you wrestle with. You put it in the book. Everyone listen to this and just put your thinking cap on for a second. It says... You, pers uh, you personally, your personality is the foundation of your self-image, self-talk, and perception. Mm. If it is, therefore, the basis of everything you do and have done, and through using this system to understand yourself and others, you make a shortcut to changing your life. 
it all starts with understanding and knowledge. The first and foremost important knowledge is to understand yourself. When you wrote that, were you reflecting mm. back or were you thinking forward? It was many, many years ago I reflected back on that because I, I started studying this more than 10, I, I would say 10, 10, 12, 13 years ago. And when I, when I realized this, the, the personality system that I tell, that I write about in my book, I wish I had knew this before. Yeah, it was like, if I had known this when I raised our kids, if I had known this when I was a CEO, I would have been so different. And I, I, I said that to Tom once and he said, yeah, but you were not ready for it. And that's true. I was not ready for it. So, but it, it, it's such a strong thing to understand yourself because when you understand yourself, you understand your thinking, you understand your behavior, you understand when you're good and when you're not good. But it, it took many, many years. And I, I, I didn't realize that I was so angry driven until Agatha, which is here today. She's a very dear friend of ours. And she's a coach as well. She said, you know that your personality is angry driven. It was like putting a needle in balloon. It's like, wow, wow. And I will always be thankful to her for, for, you know, putting that needle. And she works in a different way as a coach than I do as a mentor. But it's like, boom, it was gone. Wow, all that anger, all that anxiety was like, gone. Yeah. And that's understanding your personality. But then again, you know, I could study it as much as I want and I look look in the mirror and I don't see it until someone from the outside angles it 10 degrees to the left and says, you know, you're you are always angry. It's like, mm, yeah, it's cool. Once and you that, understand. Sorry, sorry what were you going to say? No, I just said that that's that's the beauty of having someone around you that actually sees you and, and that, you know, challenges you. And either well, it's also, in a soft way kicking your butt or it's just putting a finger in your eye. I don't know what it's called, but, you know, the purpose is not to be nice because when people just talk what you want to hear, then you don't develop. Well, and once you do get to know who you are, you can give permission to someone to talk straight and give you the hard news. So then, then you can give permission to someone because you're confident now you know who you are to take mm -hmm. that tough dose of medicine that people will give you, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for instance, I, I, I have clients that are that want to be entrepreneurs. They want to start up, you know, they want to have the freedom of, of running their own business. They're sick and tired of being employed and, and so on. And then they are the kind of person that will say they are phlegmatic. You know, we're all a mix of it, but the phlegmatic, you know, they, they want peace of mind and they cannot make decisions because making a decision doesn't give them peace of mind. And then... I say, well, you cannot be phlegmatic being successful as an entrepreneur because the key thing is to make fast decisions. So you have to learn to be more choleric, more like me. And that is how we use this, you know. And if you are very, very much sanguine, you're always jumping after the fun thing. And I, I, I can tell I, I, I have, um, he, he is, uh, <clears throat> he's a director of a division in a big company. He's one of my clients, and he's a he's a sanguine choleric, meaning that he's always out up for the fun and he makes fast decisions, meaning he's just jumping after the new shiny object all the time. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. As long as I get attention. And I told him, you know, you you have to change to become the CEO you want to be. I said, you are too lightweighted. And he didn't like that, but he got the idea. Yeah, I said, you cannot just, as a CEO, we cannot jump after the new shiny object. You have to be long-term. You have to be a heavyweight here, you know, you have to. And then it started to change. And that was kind of the, <clears throat> maybe the emotional impact that you needed to change because you need some kind of emotional impact to change. So the personality plays a big part of it. Understanding the personality, also mm -hmm. understanding other people's personalities because you have to interact and play together. So part of it is, learn about yourself and then you learn about the team, the people around you, correct? Mm -hmm. And your partner and why you attract people like you do and why you, why you like some, some, some people in an environment and why others, why they don't match. And it, it's an amazing tool in selling yes. because you, you get the triggers, you know, let me go further into the book here. I'm going to go to chapter five and chapter five is all about the mind. So it picks, he goes from the personality. He now goes into your mind and Christopher writes this, many books about psychology describe that our physical senses are for survival and that 
we use our bodies to bring the next generation to life. I agree that we use our physical senses to do that too, but there is more to them than that. So much more. What do you mean by that? What do you mean that there's more? Life is lived in contrasts. You know, we, 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 have to, we have to know what we like to know what we don't like. We have to know warm to know what cold is. We have to know what sadness is to feel the joy. Um, and, and, and we use the physical senses very, very much to experience that. That it is more to it. The biggest challenge is maybe that people let their life being controlled by the physical senses. They see, hear, taste, or smell things especially see and hear in, in the environment, in, in the media world we live in now, and they let that control their feelings. So to when be it comes a deliberate to, creator, you have to control that. So, so, so then when it comes to dreaming, because you're a big dreamer, you help people learn to break free and dream outside of the box. So you have to go beyond that to really mm -hmm. become the dreamer, don't you? Yeah, more than the dreamer, more the goal achiever. The dreamer okay. would just sit the dreaming, but when you go from a wish to a dream to, uh, or from a dream to a wish to a goal, then you start moving. And then you use your ability to dream to reach the goals. Because we visualize, you know, we, we say that you think and act like the person you want to be in the goal. Yeah. You think and act. And it's not only thinking. Bob Proctor said that the biggest challenge with the movie The Secret from uh, it was in the 1890s, he said that people think that they can just sit down and meditate and think. It's not like that. You have to think and act. And the acting is the challenge because that is then you're out of the comfort zone. So let's dig a little bit deeper than that because it's really at the core of the book is how do you use those thoughts to create the ideal life? How do you actually generate them, write them down, step into it? Like you're describing, can, can you give us some practical steps to help us move further along? Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to know who you are. And you have to know that you are, I am not Christer. I am more than that. You know, I'm, I'm energy. My, my thoughts are energy. My heart beats are energy. My, my, my body is energy. You have more energy in your body than in a bolt of lightning. People don't realize that. You have 0 0.7, 0 0.7 seven volts per cell you have 37 billion cells in your body you produce a, several million cells every day and there is more energy in your body than in a bolt of lightning it's like wow um and i write it in my book it's good that we have some thoughts controlling that otherwise it would be a really relationship killer <laughs> don't touch me don't touch me <laughs> but, <laughs> luckily but it's it's like when people, you know, when athletes say that they are they are kind of out of shape, they are not there mentally, it's their thinking, their body is the same. So it's just a mental thing. It's the same thing with us. Um, and then we are connected somehow. There are 40,000 brain cells in your heart. There are 40,000 brain cells in your heart. When you talk to a Western doctor about that, they say, yeah, that's because the heart is autonomous. So if you are brain dead, your heart will still beat. I said, no, I don't believe that. And I said that to one of my clients, um, who, and he's a Muslim, he's a second generation African living in Norway, he's born in Norway, raised here, amazing young guy. And I said to that to him, and normally people say, ha, huh, I never heard that. He said, yeah, I know. I said, how do you know? It's written in the Quran. He's like, sorry, it's written in the Quran. So 1300 years ago, when the Quran was written, they knew that there are brain cells in your heart. That is why I write in my book, that is your intuition. Your intuition, I am strong. It's just intuitive. It's like, okay, no, it, it has to be. And as, as you and I have talked about, uh, Rich, the longest, the longest journey for most people is from the brain to the heart. Yeah. That's the biggest challenge. It's about what you feel. We are not rational. It's about what you feel that matters. And you now, feel with your heart. That's your sensory organ number one. Now, I, I, I am going to warn everybody, as you read this book, as you get the book, we're going to share out, uh, you know, that information, of course. But this is not a PG book. You, you are very frank and real. You use language to communicate frustration, fear, excitement. You, you use words intentionally to grab people, don't you? Well, I, I write my story. 
Uh, and I had two amazing editors, Larissa and Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Good, good, good evening. Good night to Ruth. <laughs> um, she's in Australia, and it, it's and I, 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 I as as the editing process, and this is my first book. As the editing process, we went through the editing process. It just grew and grew and grew and became more and more me. And that's a big acknowledgement of of the editors. It's like wow, and Ellen was kind of the first editor, and. <laughs> and and um, she said, you know, this this is so good now compared to what it was before, because it's it's more me, and I, I just tell my story the way it is, and I I it's like my mentoring. I cannot I cannot be someone else than me. I am personal. I like people. I love I love what I do. Um, I write from my heart. The you know the man manuscript was written in three weeks. Wow. I, I hardly slept. It was like boom, yeah, it's done. It was just into the spirit of it. So you mentioned Ruth. Ruth, I would like to come on in as the publisher live from Australia. And I would like to ask you to uh, maybe take us inside the process of working with Christopher. What can you say about this incredible man, now author? What can you say? <laughs> oh, good, good morning, good evening, good day. I'm not sure where everyone is. It's, day, um, <laughs> yes, half past five in the morning here. Um, first of all, Larissa. Um, is uh, Chris's editor, uh, publisher. Um, I'm still getting my words working this morning. Um, and she actually introduced me to Krista. And I was reflecting on this just before. One of the funniest things about my job is not knowing who I'm going to be working with or what I'm going to be working with as far as the manuscripts that come across my desk. And um, Larissa, Larissa and I have a great working relationship and I know that she will send me someone a, that I want to work with and that I'm going to click with and, and that kind of thing as well. So, um, but I do work predominantly, not intentionally, but it's predominantly with women. So when Larissa contacted me and said, you know, there's this, this gentleman I'm working with and I'd really like you to meet him and whatever, I was like, okay, cool. But this is, this is a bit different. And I can't even remember how long we talked for in our first chat, but it, it's one of those conversations that we had where, I don't think it was a particularly long conversation, but it felt like it was a long conversation because there was so much information came through from Krista when we were talking and we just kind of dump, jumped straight into all this spiritual stuff and high level stuff. And he was, I, I felt like I'd been coached afterwards and I came out of my office and I worked from home. So my family was out having dinner at the time. And I just remember coming out going, I just met this really cool guy and he's halfway across the world and he's got all this information and he's sending his manuscript and I'm so excited. And when um when I received it and then went through the um the initial editing process, which for me is a read through, and then I will come back and actually, you know, do the editing part of it. The same thing happened. I was reading it and I kept sticking my head out of the office going, oh, my goodness, listen to this. He said this. And there were so many parts that I could relate to as a 50-year-old woman um, that were challenging just simply in just reading his work. And then the editing process itself was fun. It's probably one of the most enjoyable projects that I have ever worked on because even though we were different time zones across the world, from each other we've you know obviously never met face to face other than via zoom um it was funny and there were parts um if it's okay for me to swear I particularly remember this one section that we were writing about um, I was reading and when I edit it's not just a you know dot this I across this t these are the things you need to look at there's I challenge too I'm like what do you mean by this can you explain this a little bit more that's not entirely clear or but also, this is great. This is amazing. And there was one point in the book where my response in the Google document was, I fucking love this <laughs> because that was the energy that was actually coming through in his words. Um, and, yeah, it was it was fun. It was, you know, for a, a book that was written in three weeks, I think it was edited in about the same. It, it didn't yeah. feel like work. It yeah. was bringing this um, Krista's individual uh, experiences, knowledge, understanding of the universe and quantum physics and all these big kind of concepts, bringing them to a place that was relatable and accessible and vulnerable 
Um, and I think that is needed more. I'm a, mm. I'm a big advocate for, um, and I'm, I'm going to be gender specific, but I don't intend necessarily to be, but men and women working together, um, balance of energies, masculine and feminine. We have both within us, um, you know, if, if, if we could find a way to make that work, the world mm -hmm. would be a much better place. And that was one of the things that I adore about this book is that Krista being vulnerable and talking about his crisis moments or his difficult divorce. I've gone through a divorce recently as well. And, you know, there was that I, I had tears. Um, mm -hmm. I had excitement. I had everyone, you need to listen to this. My kids around the dinner table. Like, it, yeah, it was, um, it was fun. And, one of the my favorite things about my job is what I learn from my clients. And mm. I thank Krista for that because not only did I learn some really practical aspects of how to live, work, dream, do in this world, um, I also experienced what I believe in that men and women working together and being raw and being vulnerable and sharing their stories can actually make change in this world. So I'm really grateful and I totally appreciate um, both Larissa for putting me in touch with Krista and Krista for the fun we had together when we worked through his project. Well, Ruth, yeah. thank you for being up at this time from Australia. Thanks for sharing the words, the insight <laughs> and helping to craft the book. Yeah, because Krista, you are raw, real. It's like, I'm going to give it to you. you. You don't hold anything back. I and mean, you do drop the F-bomb several times in the book, but it's used like you are being real. I don't see myself as raw, you know. That's that's maybe the challenge. I think I can scare people. Uh, Ellen says that others say that as well. I know I can scare people because I'm direct, but that's also the choleric way. You know, being a choleric is like you just cut the crap. It's like this is the way it is, and and that's a challenge. You have to modify yourself, and it takes many many years. And that is why self, you know, to be conscious, aware of yourself, who you are, is important. Because if you want people to change, you have to change yourself. Yes. Bob Proctor said that. And it's, it's one of, and I thank Bob, you know, I, I was I was mentored by Bob at the end of his life and I still miss him. I, I, I'm sure he, he is with us now. And, and it's like, he, he said to me, I, I said, I, I had one question to Bob in the first call I was there. I said, Bob, what do we do with doubt? And doubt is a big thing. You know, I doubt the universe, I doubt myself, I doubt people around me, I doubt everything. And he looked through me, through like on Zoom like this, and he said, Chris, you have a self-confidence problem. <laughs> I thought, what the... Mm, I didn't like to hear that. I mean, <laughs> I've been CEO, I travel the world. I mean, I I flew, well, in one week, I flew around the world in my job. And I, it's like I'm sailing, I'm hiking and doing everything. And this guy in Canada says to me, and looks directly through me and says, you have a self-confidence problem. And that opened up me. Yeah, I do. Because doubt is lack of confidence in yourself. And he also said, you know, Chris, you have only one problem in life, and that is you. And you have only one solution in life, and that is you. And I thought, hmm, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> And I need to change. I need to change. If you want to change in life, you have to start changing. You cannot just sit there thinking about it. You have to start doing it. You have to start, you know, change the way you think, change the way, especially change the way you think, and then it changes the way you feel about yourself. Yeah. Well, since we've mentioned your wonderful wife, and she's sitting up there, I'm going to bring her in at this point. And just have a little conversation with her. You get to sit in, Krista, and, 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 you know, be a part of this. But, Ellen, thanks for being with us. Uh, I, I know you've been traveling the world. You're having a great adventure out on the boat. What was it like to go through this with Krista while he was writing the book? Well, actually, I was surprised that it was only three weeks <laughs> writing this book. <laughs> um, because, but, but uh, he was, he, he, as always, Krista is doing things very fast. When he decides to do something, he's doing it right away. Uh, and uh, I was sure that this book was going to be written fast, but three weeks, I was amazed. But I was always getting chapters, and I was reading through them, and they were changed. And before I was able to read one chapter, he had rewritten it, and I had to read it one more time. So I think I read this book <laughs> a few times now. Um, 
but I, I just wanted listening to you, Ruth. Um, I wanted to say that thank you for describing the process so well because I I know Christy very well and I see that he is touched to tears when he hears mm. that. Mm. So I, I am the one who knows that Christy is easily crying when he sees a movie. So mm. <laughs> so so I know this this means a lot to him. Mm. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. So, but what? Uh, yeah. What's your favorite part of the book? What would you say is your favorite part? Forget about him for a minute. What about you? I think I think I learned um, the parts about the personalities, the different personalities, because we use that every day ourselves. We are uh, not a perfect match in personalities, but we make it work because we know how to make it work. So I can say to him, stop being such a choleric. <laughs> and he understands what I mean. And he can say the same back to me because we are, we are, I am more like a melancholic person, but I am also a choleric. So we understand what it means and we can use that uh, every day. Uh, and of course, we don't talk like that all the time, but it's very useful for us. Mm -hmm. So I like that part. I think everybody should know that part. That's, that's wonderful. Ellen, thanks for being a part of this today. Congratulations. You are in the background supporting them, helping them do all this. So congratulations and stay safe as you guys keep traveling the thank world you. as well. I just want to say I'm very proud of him. Mm, thank you, my dear. <laughs> and I'm proud of you too. You know, we are a team and this is not some. you know, living with me is not easy when I write a book or I, Alien says I have this OCD. You know, I don't have OCD. I have CDO because that's alphabetically correct, you know. <laughs> it's, but that's also a choleric thing. It's like, okay, so one of the things you do when you change yourself is that you're very, very good at discipline. You're very focused. You tend to selfishness, you know, because you live in your world, especially when you are in, in a change period, outside the comfort zone, you're in the learning zone, you're outside and you're just acquire new skills and and then you know you you tend to be really focused and and that's okay and I, I can just refer to about the selfishness because some people feel selfish when they get mentored and I can refer to Abraham Hicks Abraham Hicks is is um, one of the best speaker about uh, law of attraction Esther Hicks is is like a med is a medium for Abraham and Abraham says I am so selfish because I love you so much it's one of the most beautiful sentences I know I am so selfish because I love you so much. Because then you can give unconditional love, which is what we everyone wants is the unconditional love. We don't want the conditional love. We want the unconditional love. And you give that when you are your best. So, yeah. Wonderful. Let's open it up to the gallery. Does anyone have a question for Christopher? Remember, we have prizes, giveaways. We're going to give you a link to purchase the book. But we also do want to... Uh, let you come on in. So raise your digital hand at the bottom. If you know where the digital handprint is, hit that, raise your digital hand. Or if you just want to get my attention and you're on camera, just flap your wings. You, you, it, it's okay. You're among friends. Uh, but if you have a question, let me know. We would love to have you jump on in with us live here today. And if your uh, camera's off, following along, feel free to use the chat to ask me a question as well. And we will- Can, can I add one, add one thing? All right. So I was just- Flipping through my book, and it ended, of course, on the butterfly effect, which is very, very interesting. Okay, so I tell, I write, I write, I write about um, quantum physics because it's important to understand that we. This is not a belief. This is not religion. This is physics. You take your thoughts, and you alter your energy. You manipulate your energy, your thinking. You manipulate your feeling by focusing on what you want, and then many people wonder, well, do I do enough? And then we come into do the mathematics into the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect was was developed or was recognized when they started to to work on meteorology, you know, where you look weather systems and all that, and they realized that just a small change in the in 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 the numbers made a huge difference in the system. So the butterfly effect is mathematics. If you are fifteen percent correct at the beginning, you are guaranteed eighty five percent outcome. Yeah, that's why. 15% correct at the beginning, 85% outcome. So just trust the butterfly effect and have your intentions. I want to do this. Then your actions, they don't need to be perfect. Your butterfly, yeah. the butterfly effect takes care of that. 
as I read the book and I got to the quantum physics part, I go, do I need a special degree at this point of the book? So he did a great job breaking down quantum physics, how it plays into this. Don't let that freak you out. It really does all make sense in there. Um, any questions, comments as we, uh, again, uh, and if not, I'm going to bring in one more special guest, but I want to get the time if anyone has a question they want to drop on in here and feel free to do that. But I'm going to bring in Larissa. She is the publisher. She is behind the scenes, but also actually this whole thing got started because Larissa connected with me. She was a guest on one of my shows. And then Larissa reached back out and said, I think I have someone that needs to have a book lunch party. And here we are. So Larissa, thank you for introducing me to Krista. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like between Krista, Rich, Ruth, and I, we've just been this, I don't know what the four version of a trifecta is, but <laughs> this force to be reckoned with here. And I, what I want to say about Krista is um, I firmly believe that everyone comes into our life for a reason. They have something to offer us, something to give us, something to that we can share with them. And meeting Krista was, was no short of meeting that expectation of bringing something into my life that I desperately needed at the time. And part of the reason I do what I do is to hear the messages and to get the behind the scenes of all of these amazing things that people are doing. And Krista really lived up to that expectation of walking the talk of what he was doing and outside of you know we had a lot of back and forth book related conversations but we had other conversations too that were so in-depth he asked me questions that nobody has ever asked me before and that is the mark of a good author that extends beyond their pages and is more than just what they put in words they are the full embodiment of what they are saying and I have two two lessons that Krista taught me that I want to share he already talked about, he had the four, the four habits of highly successful people. There's one that really stuck out to me, uh, or two actually, learn from people who have done what you want to do. And I think that's what attracted Krista into my circle was I was a best-selling author. I had done what he wanted to do. I had the, you know, I had the books that had gone the mile and I was practicing what I preach. And, and he, the, the second one was make the fast decision. It was almost immediate when Krista and I met. It was a yes, we, this needs to happen. We need to work together and it will be beautiful. So I am eternally grateful to have brought Krista into my circle and to have been a part of his book. I have it here. Um, I, my daughter and I were flipping through it today. I said, mommy helped make this. Like this, we, we you know, I helped bring this into the world and it's a, it's a book that's going to change lives. What is, what is your hope for Krista. Let's forget about the book for a minute. Now that he's an author, he's a global mentor, he's an adventurer. What's your hope for Krista? If you could be the mentor for him for a second. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think Krista has so much opportunity to touch people in different ways. And I think he has a really strong way to figure out what people need to hear. And I hope that more people come into his circle where he gets that opportunity to truly say what needs to be said, the words that need to come into this universe. Um, the book will be the foundation for those conversations, but it's the actual talking to him and letting him into your yes. circle so that he can give you that advice. That That's where the real magic is going to happen. The book will get you started. It's the conversations with Krista that are going to take you the rest of the way. We got a heart emoji popping up. We got comments in the chat on that. Christopher, what would you respond to your publisher? <clears throat> well, you know, um, I, 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 I think I can be a challenge to the environment. And I think I was a challenge to Larissa as well, because we had Larissa is, is on her way to, to a psychology degree and master's, I think. And then I, I asked her, how do you know if that is true? And she said, it's written in the books. Well, then it's true what's written in my book too. So why don't you believe it? <laughs> yeah and, and, and to me it's you know i asked tom that same question you know when you are a psychologist do you see the patient healthy or sick do you see do you see the patient to live his or her dream life or do you do do you see them mentally sick it's so important because the energy you transfer the energy you transfer from your heart is everything it's absolutely everything. And we, we are working with the same things, you know. We are working with energy. We are working with manipulating thoughts. We are working on, 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 on having a new, uh, different life. So, and I think that that was a challenge for Larissa as well. Another 
very very interesting thing is where uh, that we talked about which is where where do ideas come from yes yeah it's like did we get this package it's like boom wow it's christmas time i have a new idea where do they come from i have to look up and look behind the stars and say wow that's that's where all the ideas are but i don't know i i don't have the answer it's an intuition it's the universe it's everything so yeah so i do have a question question. we do have a question coming from agatha she mm-hmm. would like to hear more about why you wanted to write the book and, you know, what's the vision behind the book? It's, it, it's a great question. She, she stole my ending question. I'm going to cite it in now. <laughs> the book is a result of a goal. I, I, I wrote a goal. I have, I have my goals on a goal card. You know, that is very, very dear to me. Ellen knows that if I lose my goal card, I'm, I'm out of my mind. I cannot leave the house without a gold card. It's not enough to have it written on my cell phone because the cell phone is a different energy. I have it on my gold card. And I have three gold cards. I have one in my office, one in my pocket, and one in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and and <clears throat> I, I have had many different goals. But but the one that sticks out is that I, I and, and I wrote that last year. I want to help thousands of people every day living their full life. I want to help thousands of people all over the world living their full life every day. And I didn't know how to do that. I had no idea. And and I was just, you know, writing down keywords and notes for for my PowerPoint presentation and so on on the train. And one day, one morning I was meditating and I thought, oh, why don't I write a book? Yeah. And then I thought, oh, that's the purpose. That is the purpose of the goal is that I shall write the book. And I thought, I, I don't know how to do that, but I know how to write. And I, I know the material pretty well. And then I just started writing. I just, you know, because it, it was this desire. It was into the spirit of it. It was just this need to get it out. It's like, okay, I cannot, it, it just, yeah, I just have to get it out. <laughs> and it took three weeks to get it out at least uh, the manuscript then so um, so that that was the purpose i can just say to everyone now that my goal changed four days ago and and it changed that from and you know a goal is a reflection of your self-image which is, which is very very interesting your self-image is your inner speech what do you tell what do you what do you think you can do and cannot do so four days ago and I, I took a photo of it and sent it to Ellen because I have to share my goals with her so she knows what the journey we are on. And they, it's not a dramatic change. It's just a change of self-image. And I'm pretty sure that's because the book is published. Every day I help hundreds of thousands of people all over the world living their full life. It changed from thousands to hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people. Well, so the, and you and I have talked about that. Yeah. We have talked about you get done with one goal. You have to have another goal. You have to have another goal. Yeah. So you are literally at the moment recognizing I've achieved this. I have to move bigger, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I never stand still. Never, never, never. Always push, always push forward. You know, something. I, it it can be painful, you know, emotionally for myself. It's like, oh, why do I have to do that? Why don't I rest? And it's like, well, now I'm done. You know, I had uh, Larissa as an amazing mentor, and I can also say that Larissa came. I think it was through LinkedIn. We connected and there was no purpose on that. And I saw that she had this free strategy calls and I thought, well, why don't we just have a call? And I didn't know she was a book mentor. And it was like 15 minutes into that. She said, well, okay, I'm a mentor. I have this. Okay, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I told us earlier so that you sell you too cheap, you know, but you know that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you, the price you take is, is a reflection of your self-image as well. So. You, you, you've heard a lot about the book. I'm dropping the chat right now. Here's the link to go buy the book. You're going to log into Amazon, get a hold of the book. You're going to read it. You're going to love it. You're going to reread the book again uh, because it does grab you. It does compel you. And we're also going to do uh, some prizes here. Uh, we have a, a magic wheel that we're going to bring on camera here in just a minute. And we have three different uh, gifts, prizes, uh, and we're just going to take them in order. And, uh, We'll ask Krista if, if if you still have some of those fashion items. You can hold them up and uh, you know display yeah. them as, as 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 we go through this here. Um, so let me bring this on and give me a thumbs up. Everyone can see the screen, right? Give me a thumbs. Th- there, there we go. <laughs> Make sure this works really, really well. And uh, spin number one for the very first prize. Here we go. And we are going to give it. 
Uh, Larissa, Larissa. <laughs> I cannot accept a prize. Please spin again. This is this right. is for everyone else, not All me. Right. She, 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 she is bumped off. This is here we go again. Again, this will be for a T-shirt, and uh, I, I'm sure Chris can sport one of those cool T-shirts out there. So let's spin you it again. Abra Dabra Kaboo, who is it going to be? And Aaron wow. Foley will be getting that. And again, we will make sure we will email everybody, get the proper address, get the proper information. And uh, Aaron will be getting a lucky teacher. And Aaron has to get removed from the dial. So we keep trimming it down here. Now we have an apron and an autographed copy of the book. An apron and uh, the smiles are going off. And I see people getting excited now. They're, they're getting into this. Here we go. Let's 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 see who we've got. Drum roll, please. Belinda could have got it before, but now she really does get it. This is awesome. So Belinda, this is again, so cool. Pick... It's a bit daring, but different uh, apron. It's so cool. So apron and book autograph. We will make sure we send the email off and get that in. And now we are down for the grand prize. It's going to be the autograph book, not just one, but two shirts two shirts and we will ask for your size and make sure we get the right size so you don't have that because you want to support this you want to strut this you want to be daring and be different so here we go final prize of the afternoon so colorful in that dial and tom green gets himself the autographed copy of the book and a teacher tom's got a big smile how do you like that tom <laughs> So we will make sure you guys get those gifts and, uh, you know, be, 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 be sure that you do order the book. And Chris, I, I, I do want to go back to a couple more questions. I want to make sure you get the final word in all of this. But when it comes to your expectations of writing a book, because mm -hmm. I, I know you set goals, you set expectations, you want to reach for the next level. Has getting the book done met your expectations? Or were you wanting, hoping, or still wanting, hoping more for you in that book? The purpose of a goal is not to reach the goal. The purpose of a goal is who you become on your way to the goal. Always. It's a personal development thing to having a goal. It's not to reach the goal. The purpose of, 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 of writing the book is who I become on the way to writing the book. So we, we, it was kind of, okay, I wanted to, I wanted to publish the book and I also wanted to be an international bestseller. And I manifested that many, many times. And Ellie knows how I manifest and how I visualize. And I have, I have like a storyboard of, of my whole goal card in front of me when I talk to you now. So I visualize all the time. And, and when I started writing the book, I didn't have, I didn't have like the, the cover or anything. Um, so I just made a mock-up of a book and said international bestseller. So, and, and it, it became an international, and Larissa asked me, do you want to sell many books? To have, what, what's the purpose of the book? The purpose of a book is to change people's life. And also, of course, to be like an introduction to my mentorship. And I want to have an international bestseller. And it, we did that. It was uh, like the newcomer of, um, it was it was a bestseller just the first day we launched it. And, and this is how it works. You know, you set the goal and you reach it and you reach it effortless because it's all about, it's a mental game. It's not, the, of course, you have to do the fiscal job as well, writing the book. But so what does it, so the answer to the question, what does it feel to be here? Amazing. What does it feel to be an author? Strange. <laughs> I, I, my, my, my business card still says mentor. And that, that is very much true heart desires, but that, that the way to change pe many people's life is through media and i think writing a book i like the old-fashioned thing i really like studying through reading reading and writing handwriting is so strong so um yeah it has absolutely fulfilled the expectations so far and i like me more than i was before i was an author and then for the coming years yeah it's, it's going to be amazing so you got the book Reflecting back on the process, was there a point in the book? Is there a section of the book that was the most challenging for you to write? Was there an area that you said, don't know if I should do it? It's maybe maybe it's too much. Was there an area that you wrestled with what yeah. goes in the book at this point? The developing editing with Larissa. Oh, Not wow. because Larissa is no, 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 but the, 
She she's a great mentor. She's like amazing mentor. But she challenged me of how much I would like I, I felt comfortable giving of my own feelings. Wow. Because she said, you know, you be more personal here. And I thought, you know, that was gut wrenching. It's like, yeah, how much do I want to give? How honest do I want to be? Because I give a lot of myself. When I say that I was afraid, when I say I'm sad, when I say I, it feels like I'm a tiger in a cage and I want to break free. And, you know, with Ellen, we had this agreement that, you know, I'm going to sail around the world. And if we are going to be together, you have to join me. And it, But there was a second thing, too. We had to wait for her youngest son, Thomas, to grow up before we could leave because she has younger kids than I. Andreas is, well, it, it's almost 10 years different, seven, eight years different. So I had to wait. I just had to sit there, wait like a tiger in the cage, and I wanted to sail, you know, and I had to describe that, you know, describe that never, never, never give up, never give up a goal, but then, yeah, and and Ruth says it's it's that honesty, yeah, but that's painful, yeah. that was a challenge, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that, again, it I had to push myself out of the comfort zone, into the, into the, in in you know, into the, out of the comfort zone and just move, move, move. It, it's very interesting that you say that deeper personal side was harder mm -hmm. because having interacted with you, listened to you, you are an open book in so many ways. And it's very refreshing to have a mentor, global influencer to be such an open book. So the fact that you got to get coached a little bit, encouraged a little bit, great job, Larissa. Be the, it, it shows up in the book that you went that next step further. We do want to share that you do have a special offer for everybody here today. And can can you kind of explain a little bit about what this will include if they uh, take a call with you? Sure. If you if you want to have a strategy call with me, um, book that on, on, on my calendar link. And I offer, instead of just a regular 30 minutes, I offer one hour. And, and that's a personal conversation, you know, and it's on Zoom. And uh, because I, I like, I love helping people. And I know that giving is, is the best, is, is what I really love. So, so the special offer, if you, if you, if you go to my Calendly site, you know, book, book one, write the comment that says, you know, I, I was there and then we will change that from 30 minutes to, to one hour and I will help you. I know I can help you and I will see you in your goal. Christopher Johnson, we are celebrating be daring be different reverse engineering of your life from who you are to who you want to be. Congratulations. Your book launch party is officially done. The book is out. It's released. They can get it. And do you, do you want to go to Disney? What do you want to do now that you've, you've achieved the party and we're rocking now? What, what is your next big thing besides going back out in the ocean? <laughs> I don't know yet. I don't know. Well, the big, next big thing is that I follow my principles. I always have a mentor. And since I'm done with, I cannot say done with Larissa. I will never be done with Larissa. She will always be, you know, Ruth and Larissa helped me with, with this book. But so I, I, I reached out to my to a mentor last Friday. And it was scary, but I felt ready. So I'm going to be mentored again because I need someone to kick my butt to move further on. I don't, want to be I don't want to be comfortable. I don't want to settle. I always stretch. Always. I think that's the perfect way to end the book launch. You mm. need someone to kick his butt a little bit higher. They keep going for the next goal, the next goal. That is summarizing Christa Johnson really well. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to be here with us. And thank you for participating, playing along. For those that added the testimony, thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, only the greatest continued success for Christa Again, this is just the beginning of the Be Daring, Be Different, and uh, celebrating him with the book. Congratulations, Christopher. And again, we will keep pushing out the media to help you get amplified and shine brighter and brighter, my friend. <laughs>